Like a string of pearls along the eastern edge of the Great Bahama Bank, the Exuma Islands offer a cruising paradise, as long as you navigate with the appropriate charts. For safe navigation in Bahama waters, we figured the so-called Explorer charts to be quite convenient, which can be used as paper charts or as RNCs with your own GPS position as an overlay. The strong currents between the cots today lead us to Black Point Settlement at Great Guana Key, which is the largest center of population in the Exumas after Georgetown. For us, the most relevant was it has the best washing facilities we found in the Bahamas. Elia has just come from below, scrubbing, and we have a jungle here. It has been one and a half years, I think, since I have washed laundry for warmer days. So Tula is uh, a bit of a parade today. Uh, but luckily the Bohemian sun is nice and warm. And it dries pretty quickly. Black Point settlement itself was not as spectacular. But we were some happy fellows, after having had so little washing possibilities on our journey so far. I guess a water maker and a small washer is a must for our next big round. Just around the corner at Bitter Guanaki, we found a beautiful beach and scenic coastline to enjoy in our hammock. This island is home to some endemic animals living here in great numbers. Rock iguanas. If you wonder at the name iguana, it's Spanish. It was taken from the Arawak word iguana. These large lizards thrive in dry areas where there are sandy patches for breeding. The limestone with its protected holes provides spaces to retreat in. The shade the giant lizards find in these holes also helps them to regulate their body temperature. Sometimes approaching you with great speed, these creatures gave you a little fright, as they are not small and could easily serve as film models for the reconstruction of dinosaurs. The rock iguanas supposedly once used to be eaten by the early inhabitants of the Bahamas. Today they are all protected by the Wild Animals Act. Their population listed as rare though. A bit creepy crawly, but pretty cool.
so we are here on iguana beach uh there's some iguanas here but there's also a little bit of wildlife below us so let's go have a look Just a puddle jump further north, we found Thunderball Grotto. An amazing cave, mysteriously illuminated by the midday shafts of sunlight filtering into the cave from above and through underwater tunnels. Reaching down into the depths, they create a blaze of neon blue in contrast to the outer blackness and under your fins, the Thunderbolt tropical fish population hangs out, curiously waiting for handouts in form of breadcrumbs. This limestone cave does in a way resemble a Swiss cheese with a high dome, having two entrances, both almost entirely below water. We were lucky to be one of the first to arrive at low water, at Slack. Just shortly after, Thunderball Cave was a forest of fins and snorkels, spoiling the magic a bit. Nonetheless, we were mesmerized by this grotto that was named after the 1965 James Bond movie filmed here. We explored not only the inside of the grotto, but also the surrounding a bit, finding some of the most colorful corals in the Bahamas. It was amazing to experience fish showing absolutely no fear, sometimes coming so close with you accidentally brushing them for a millisecond, or swimming so close in front of your goggles that its contours turned blurry, while in the background you could see purple fans dancing back and forth gently the sunbeams making them seem magical.
about it from the James Bond movie Thunderball. Actually, the story is not that real, because he, once he discovered the stolen bomb, he went through another tunnel inside this grotto. Into this grotto. Um, yeah, but it's not true because there's no other entrance than from the front. A little dingy right away, we also spotted another airplane wreck, under whose wing we unfortunately disturbed someone during its afternoon nap. Time goes fast, but yet so slow. I leave all thoughts, yeah, I let them go. Cause I'm here with you. You might have got the impression that we had found a spot almost totally unspoiled, totally remote. But actually, we were right in the place that people refer to as hustling and bustling Staniochi, with the most expensive mini supermarket we have encountered, cornflakes being the cheapest, at $12 a box. Wow, okay. <laughs> I guess we got it. The hustling and bustling part. We were super glad to welcome Anno, Rosanne and little Behrend with their steel catch De Jong at our rather shallow anchorage. The shallow waters and reefs around Staniel Key are, let's say, a bit of a challenge. Our keel kissing the ground again.
so we are making our preparations for the Atlantic crossing and we have a look at the weather every morning so we have here the low pressure here the high pressure it's quite a big one here yeah. so this is how it looks like a week from now a lot of rumba samba out there in the Atlantic so this is why you have to plan your route the 3,000 miles to Azores very precisely well it's not 3,000 miles but it's like 2,400 direct route but I think we had to do a small circle so it's gonna be like 3,000 58, 54, 54, whoa. 56, 60 knots. Thanks for joining us on our underwater scene loaded episode. We hope you enjoyed it. In our upcoming episodes, we continue our last leaps up the Exumas chain with me switching boats for a passage, discovering more amazing caves, natural pools, and enjoying private concerts on board. So we are here at one of the um, first islands of the Kuma Man and Sea Park. Pretty amazing, I would say. We share amazing times with a little Swiss-German fleet that forms for a little moment of time after all of us head into different directions again. Us facing a rather tricky and challenging 3,000 mile passage to islands lying in the midst of the North Atlantic, the stunning Azores. Pico, pico. <laughs> to support us with continuing to share our sailing adventures on camera, Team Tula's Patreon platform is a great one to join. Here you have access to the newest video one week in advance. Single donations can be done via our website support section. Thanks heaps and see you in two weeks.